Welcome to another episode of your Technology Questions Answered, and Happy Mother's Day to every single person that is a mother listening to the show on this day, May 8th, 2011. We are episode 32, Installing Printers, and Linux is the title of the show, and I'll be showing you how to do this. Now, today's topics include a side update, a podcast upgrade, a listener survey invitation, and the procedures and troubleshooting procedures to installing your printer within Linux. So let's start with first things first. Site upgrades. More specifically for the podcast and the show note pages. If you now follow the link to the show note page, which I actually do post in the video and in the info of the MP3, you will notice you'll be able to go back into the previous episodes from before and even access a newly revised episode list. This will allow you to listen to every single version and episode of our podcast. This way you can actually follow along. I try to keep most of my topics in kind of a continuation of the previous topic. That way there's actually an order to my shows and you can listen to the previous ones and actually understand more about each future podcast episode. This is very useful because each of those pages includes direct download links to the MP3, MP4, the direct link to the video on YouTube, and you can even subscribe from anywhere on the website to YouTube, iTunes, FeedBurner, or just straight off the website from the RSS feeds. Now, I've also added another upgrade to make it easier for me and any of my future advertisers to actually figure out who is listening and from where they're listening from. So we've added PodTrack to each of our episodes in our TQA episode index. Now, every time the file is downloaded, we'll actually know how many times it is. We'll have the ability to find out how many unique downloads and how many downloads we actually have. This is going to be useful to me because that will allow me the ability to also know how many people are actually listening to my show but I would love to know more about you so I'm inviting you to do a listener survey you'll find the link at www.zedaxis.net it's in the podcast bookmark on the far left and you'll see a link at the bottom a podcast bookmark asking you to start the listener survey It will allow me to know your age range your geographic location if you put it in what you think of the show, how often you listen to the show, and many other questions that you will see. It only takes a few minutes to do, and you can do it anonymously, on top of all else. I ask you to do this because it will allow me the ability to better direct my show in the correct direction. It allows me to also pick better topics for my podcast, keeping the information more interesting and more target-specific. Now... The next thing I would like to talk about is how to install a printer within Linux. So how about instead of following my show notes, we go backwards. I'll tell you some troubleshooting hints so I can get it off right now so that some of you that look at the video on YouTube actually understand or realize, although you can also listen to iTunes in any other place, that even though I'm making it look simple, it's not necessarily simple. First. When you're installing a printer within Linux, please bear in mind, if you see your printer in the driver sets, you're going to probably be fine. For those of you, like me, that have a printer that is not listed, here are a few tricks. One, look up your printer, like I discovered, an MP560, by the way, a multifunction printer. So I did say I was going to try to get one to work, and I've actually got most of it to work. An MP560, get this, I couldn't understand this, but, you know, sometimes companies are a little odd, is actually the new version of a MP620. Yes, the numbers are going down and not up. Don't ask, that's Canon, not me. So... When installing the printer within Linux, I had discovered, by just checking the history of the machine, 
that it's not the MP500 or 520 driver I should be using, but in fact the MP610 driver. Now Canon, like some other companies, attempt to keep you from installing in Linux anything because they're trying to get you to go into Windows because they want you to use their software, which is often buggy and useless. So here's another way. In some other continents and countries, it's actually illegal to force you to use a specific operating system. So you go to the Asian and European versions of these websites, you may actually find the real Linux drivers for your printer, including on some sites the actual PPD files that you need to get it to work. So another way of getting a printer that does not work to work is by looking up the drivers in another geographic location on the same website that your computer's printer came from. So if your printer is from Canon and your North American and you don't find a Linux driver in a North American website, try the Asian website. There's often an English version anyway. And if you speak French, just probably a French version or an Italian version or anything like that. Because these websites carry all the drivers, they just don't want other people to know about them. Now, another thing that you can do to get a printer to work is by using a generic print driver. It's a little bit more complicated. You'll probably end up with just text printing. But if you look up your printer and get all the correct settings for the ports, you'll get it to work anyway. And sometimes you can even get it to print pictures anyway that look pretty amazing. So keep in mind, if it doesn't work, look up the history of your machine. If you can determine from your machine that it is an original build, then look for the driver for that machine. Or, if it's not an original build and it's actually a different chassis, look for the drivers of the original build. Then, if all else fails, look on the website of the printer and go to another geographic location and try to find the Linux drivers from there. And if you can get the PPD files, that will be amazing. So, let's get on to the Linux part of the show, where I'm going to actually demonstrate the installation process using the brand new Ubuntu 11.04 Natty Narwhal operating system for Ubuntu using the Unity toolbar which is actually going to be on the far left of my screen. In a day of digital medians, we still find a real need for printers and in an age where more and more of us are converting to Linux based operating systems, we are finding it's a real deal and headache trying to get our printers to work within Linux. So today, we tackle the installation process for getting your printers to work within Linux. Things you will need are as follows, a dash of patience, a few breaths of air, a printer, a computer with Linux installed, Linux installed, excuse me, in our case, Ubuntu 11.04, Natty Narwhal, including the Unity toolbar, and a few minutes to follow our instructions. I found the sites you need and the instructions you require, so the rest you don't need to worry about. So prior to opening your computer, you can turn the printer on. This will allow Linux to detect the correct printer driver, or once Ubuntu is already loaded, you just have to turn the printer on. It should detect it without any problem. Now, I want you to open the Applications folder. In the Unity toolbar, this is a magnifying glass with a plus sign in it. So look up the plus sign. It's the only one in the Unity toolbar by default. You need to open it up. You will see three sections. One is the most recent applications used. The other one is all your applications, which you'll have the number installed on your system. Just click it to open up everything. Below is the recommended applications. Just look up the printing icon. It is a printer, of course. Opening it up, you see there is no printer. So all you need to do is click the Add button. At this point, it will detect your printer. If it's already detected, simply select it and click Forward. Now we'll try to seek out the correct printer driver. If it's not there, it will try to find a recommended printer driver. Now find the name of your, the company that made your printer, in our case Canon, and click forward. Now we know it says recommended 500, but like I told you, 
Always look it up if you're not too sure about your printer to see if it's based off another machine, just in case the printer driver is not actually there. In our case, it's based off of 620, so we're going to use the 610 instead of the 500 for the MP560. So, click 610 in our case, click forward, click forward again, print the test page. This is when you know if the printer works or not. In our case, it worked with a little bit more modification than this. Most printers, this is all you need to do to get it to work. Now, if it doesn't work, go to the websites that I have actually suggested. Go to the other company websites, see if there are any Linux. Install those, go through the same process again, only this time, instead of selecting the manufacturer, allow this to actually find the drivers required, which you should have installed by now, select or provide the PPD file. Open up, look where you put it, then click open. The rest of the instructions are just as straightforward as before. Just as a side note, when all else fails and we still can't use the printer, there is another option if you still have a Windows machine in the house. It's through the use of something called Samba, which is another application that I will show you later on when I hijack the machine behind me and use it as the print server. So you're going to have to look for that solution in a few episodes from now. Next week, I'm going to show you how to install and use your scanner within the Linux environment. So thank you for having listening to today's show. Don't forget to subscribe to our weekly show. Fill out our listener survey, which is available at www.zedaxis.net. Send me your questions, qu comments, suggestions, and stories to tqa at zaxis.net. If you want to support my show, there are two ways you can do it. You can buy our unique gear and apparel, which also make great gifts, at www.zedaxis.net. Or you can actually donate any amount, doesn't matter if it's 25 cents, a dollar, anything you want, at our PayPal account at TQA at zaxis.net. So I'd like to see you all here next week. Have a great day, a great week, goodbye, and good night, depending where you're listening from. This has been your technology questions answered.